Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? I will indeed. Um, I, my, my association with the theatre started when I was five in Australia, where I was born in Sydney. And I, was, I joined a dance group or a sort of movement group. There's a woman called Heather Gell, and she put on shows at Christmas. So my first performances were as a rat in Pi The Pied Piper of Hamlin and a water baby in Maeterlinck's Bluebird. So these were my two first two performances and then I was completely bitten by the fact that I was going to perform in some way. But I wanted to be a dancer. I had no desire to be an actress. I wanted to be a ballet dancer. So I then started taking ballet lessons in Australia. And when, then when, we were, when I was 10, my father, who was an actor, um, they were not, my mother and father were not Australian, but they happened to have met over that side of the world in New Zealand many years ago. And so they decided to come back to England. So we came to England. And by default, well actually by design on my part, but default for my poor mother who was horrified that I was now going to give up any kind of academic sort of future at all, decided on a train coming from Liverpool Street from the boat that we had been six weeks at sea in a, a terrible berth. I mean we were doing it quite cheap because we didn't have much money so we were in this on this boat for six weeks coming to England. I so much wanted to escape from my parents that I ran down the corridor and into a into a compartment where there was a young man sitting. Now I was 10, he was probably only about 18 or 19, but I mean he was a grown man and he had red hair. And I said, my name's Linda Bathurst, which was my maiden name. And he said, my name's John Hampshire. And so I sat down and he said, what are you doing? I said, we've come to live in England. And um, I said with my best Australian accent, which I had at the time. And he said, uh, oh, well, I have a sister who's three years older than you. And she, I said, I want to be a ballet dancer. He said, well, so does my sister and my mother is an ex-ballerina and she has a ballet school. I said, oh, that sounds wonderful. Anyway, it so transpired that he, was, he lived in Dolphin Square, which is where the Hampshire family lived, and that is where we were going because Peter Finch, the actor, was my father's best friend and they had arranged for us to, have to rent a flat in, in Dolphin Square, which is where they lived, um, his Russian ballerina wife at the time, and Peter Finch's one, the one I mean. So then my mother and father came panicking, looking for me and found me. And I said, this is John and I'm going to go to the ballet school. My mother looked at me. Anyway, so we, we got into the taxi. Then my mother tried to get me into this very scholastic academic school, which had been recommended by my very good girls school in, in Australia, which is called Ascom, which is a very posh girls school. I mean, not in terms of price, but it was a sort of a high education school. And they said, well, yes, but we can't take her in the middle of a term. Well, as I couldn't bear being at home and hated living with my mother, I said, I'm not spending another six weeks not going to school after six weeks on that boat. So I think I should ring up John Hampshire and see if I could go to his mother's school, which was all in a church hall in Knightsbridge, the whole school. And Anthony Dahl was one of the students. So I, I danced alongside Anthony Dahl for the first four years. Anyway, I went there and my mother couldn't get me away. And then later I sort of grew out of that school and I went to arts educational ballet school and that is where I did my entire scholastic training. But at the age of 16, it was, I decided that I was never going to be a prima ballerina and I only wanted to be the best and I was a bit, a bit of a lumpy girl then, and, well not lumpy but I was bigger and I just, it just, I knew that I couldn't be a prima ballerina so I then decided that I would become an actress so I refused to go on with any of my schoolwork, I wouldn't even do my A-levels and I then went to drama school at the age of 17, I went to the Central School of Speech and Drama but I have always wanted to be a dancer and I still do. It, it colours everything I do. In fact, there's a scene written in which I've just done in the in um, the the, film, the television I'm doing at the moment, which the, I I said that I wanted. They asked me what my backstory was when I first had this on, ongoing part, and I said, I, "Oh, she's an ex dancer." So now they've got me dancing with my grandson and doing and. Um, do it, doing a sort of quite an elaborate sort of boring dance. I will always try and get dance into anything I do because that's really what I want to be. But I'm not. I'm an actress and I'm a producer at times and I'm a director of theatre and have been for over 55 years and so have constantly worked in, in this profession. So that brings us up to date, really. So, what is your favourite part about what you do? Uh, my favourite part about being a performer? Um... I, th I think basically, I was thinking about that yesterday while I was filming, it is so wonderfully releasing to be able to actually be somebody else and to experience and sort of have no inhibitions about, for example, 
well, a, an example is if you, you, are, you don't understand who somebody is and you think that it's your beau from an earlier year, so therefore you're able to flirt with this beautiful young man, which is something you would never do at my age in real life, but you can do it on the stage or you can do it in film or you can be somebody that you want to be. In fact, because of that, in my solo shows, I've always tried to learn a different skill because I feel here is a, here is a profession that allows me to be somebody that I'm not. So I learned to be a trapeze artist in one of them. I learned to do magic tricks in a show that is coming up. Um, just various different sort of skills. It's wonderful to be able to release yourself and actually be somebody else. And I think that's what I like about it best. What was the first moment that you fell in love with theatre? The first moment I fell in love with theatre was probably as a child when I was in Australia. I went, I was taken, there was no, no television in those days and there was, I only ever saw two films before I was ten because I wasn't, you know, I was not, it was not so usual to go to the cinema and you certainly there was no television. But my father was an actor and he was in the theatre and obviously a lot of the theatre he did wouldn't have been right for a small child. But the first thing I saw on the stage was a musical called White Horse Inn that my father was in. He played Franz Joseph. I think it's a non-singing role. And that was the first thing that I saw, and I was very young when I saw that. And I, so I think, you know, that my love of theatre came at a very early age, because my parents took me a lot to the theatre, and then when we arrived in England, they took me to see everything. I mean, I saw John Gielgud in A Day by the Sea, I saw Flora Robson, I saw all of those, Cicely Courtnidge, I saw... Um, the Dames, Sybil Thorndike, uh, Edith Evans, I mean everybody on stage. And uh, Laurence Olivier I saw on Play Othello and, and Henry V I saw Richard Burton. So I mean, you know, over the years I went to a lot of theatre. So my passion has always been in the theatre. What advice would you give your younger self? Um, what advice would I give my younger self? What, what do you mean? Do you mean... Um, would I would I change anything in my life, or would I? If I you, suppose. I mean, if you met your younger self yeah. and they needed some words of wisdom, what words of wisdom would you give them on the journey oh, I, that they're oh, about well, to go? Well, I would think probably just to follow your heart, rather you know, to follow your heart of what you like doing, of what you know, what makes you happy doing, whether that be in your career or in your life, just to actually not to do something because it might make money for you or not to do something because somebody's told that's what you should do. It's something that you would want to do, just something that, would, that actually gives you energy and enjoyment, which is what I've sort of done, really. But I would give my, I think I'd give myself the advice to do what I've done, really. If your life were a musical, what would the grand finale number be? Uh, well, it's a, probably an unusual number. It, would, it, it, it may not fit the musical, but it... it I can only take it in the in the context of me having done a musical venture which I directed, which is a Fran Landerson song called "The Ballad of the Sad Young Men." Um, all the sad young men sitting in the bars. I think it's, I think it's just called "Ballad of the Sad Young Men," and it is just the most beautifully. It's just like one by one they leave. You can either you can stage it so that one by one somebody leaves the stage and then just suddenly the light fades. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful ballad and it's a wonderful song. I mean, it's it's a song that made her famous. I think it earned her a lot of money, but it is very much, you know, it was very much. I was it was under discussion to allow me to do it as the last number of this show because somebody because there was an upbeat one before and they say why not leave it on the upbeat and I said no. Even Fran said, well, maybe you should leave the show on an upbeat, Linda. I said, no, we're having ballads, how young men. I want that as the finale.